and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you've had a great week this week as we have celebrated the Easter event. God has been good to us. He's good to us still, and we're going to have a good worship service this morning. Uh, Ann's going to come by leading us in our first songs of the day. Ann, will you come, please? Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day. Guess what? Jesus is alive, isn't he? He is alive in black. Well, that is most evident. Let's stand as we sing, My Redeemer Lives. morning. Celebrate Jesus and my land, aren't we so very, very blessed that we can come to church? You know, think about it. What if someone were standing on our church steps and they told us we could not come in this morning? They came in and told us we couldn't sing. We couldn't pray. How sad. It would be bad. You're right, Ron. It would be real bad. But we are blessed and we're going to celebrate Jesus.
Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you in God's house today. We have reason to celebrate, don't we? Our Lord is alive and well. He is risen. And uh, that just gives us purpose for each and every day. It gives us purpose for being here today and um, celebrating the Lord, celebrating life with one another, and celebrating our faith uh, together as we come. There's a lot to celebrate, isn't there? A lot to celebrate. We celebrate in Easter, and we're celebrating beautiful flowers here in our sanctuary. Aren't they beautiful? They're put in our sanctuary today because in honor of Annette Small. Um, so uh, we want to lift her up in our prayers still. Uh, we, we're celebrating birthdays too. Did you know that? You know whose birthday it is today? It's Steve Harris's birthday today. Happy birthday, Steve. You're welcome. You know what that means? We got to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. Uh, you know, if, if it's your birthday, you got to make a speech today, Steve. I got another one tomorrow. I got another one tomorrow. Well, let's sing another happy birthday song to our brother on the back row. Let's sing again. Happy birthday to you. Happy All right, here we go. You know, mine's September 21st. Y'all want to sing to me? <laughs> Charlie Danny is shaking his head. <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are so happy to have y'all in, in, in the house today to worship the Lord our God. It's, it, you know, it, isn't it fun being a Christian? It is. A lot of us think we got to come and be sticks in the mud. But you know, I don't know any sticks in the mud around Blackwell. And do you know any sticks in the mud? No, I don't either. We have a good time around here, don't we? We sure do. And it's good to see you uh, in God's house. Well, things are moving along in God's house here at Blackwell. And we uh, appreciate the work of all committees and especially appreciate the work of our pastor search committee. They have been working hard. They've been working diligently. Angie, you want to say a few words about what's taking place in the days ahead? Things are getting there. We appreciate y'all's hard work. Y'all have been working diligently. You've been working faithfully, and we appreciate your good work. Thank you, thank you, Angie and committee, so much. All right. Joy Club going to be beginning to meet um, May the 11th. You know, you know why I thought it was breakfast? Because it's at 10 o'clock. <laughs> the meeting's at 10. I guess y'all going to eat at 12 o'clock. Everyone is asked to bring a side dish, all right? And the club is going to supply the chicken, all right? So y'all make plans to be here for that, May 11th, starting at 10 o'clock. 
and they're going to start meeting on the second Wednesday of every month at 10 o'clock, all right, on Wednesday. So y'all put that on your calendar. Uh, we want to thank everybody for the generous donations for the digital piano is now paid in full. That, didn't that thing sound good last week when them trumpets started blaring? That, that sounded good, didn't it? That, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, and on the organ and Jane blowing them trumpets over here. Yeah. Yes, indeed. We thought we had us a full orchestra, didn't we? It was good. We had a good service. Yes, we did. All right, what else is going on in the life of our church? Uh, we have a special guest with us. We have special guests with us from the Scott House here in the back. And uh, the director of the Scott House is with us. Um, Dorothy Stallings is the director. And I'm going to ask Dorothy, if she would, come up and share with us a few things that's going on at the Scott House. And uh, just let us know what's going on there. I know each of y'all, a lot of y'all are involved uh, in doing different mission projects there and helping out. Uh, the house. So come on up, Miss Dorothy, and share with us. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. So good to have you today. Yes, it is. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not going to be too shy. I, you know, it is a new home, but um, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and reference God on this morning. I thank Him this morning for allowing us to come and be with y'all on this morning. We bring you greetings from the Scott House of Eliza City, which is Life Incorporated. We're lo located right here on 801 Second Street. Um, we help with disabled adults. Um, and we just thank y'all for all the, the kind things that y'all have done for us throughout the years. Um, Christmas, um, they just did an Easter egg hunt um, that they came out with the individuals and, um, and just enjoyed time with them and just spending time with them throughout the day. So I do want to tell you guys, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I do have all of them here with us. Roger, come faithfully. Um, Karen, you can wave your hand. <laughs> um, Christina. Um, Arthur. And Linwood. <laughs> Um, and like I said, Roger here with y'all faithfully every Sunday. And we do thank you guys for everything that you do. Um, I said we were going to come in and, you know, show our face and just let you guys know that we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And if anytime y'all need us, I know myself, don't hesitate. I'm always a phone call away. And I'd like to t um, thank Miss Sharon um, for everything that she does for us. Thank you. Miss Sharon didn't want to be mentioned, but guess what? She got mentioned, didn't she? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Miss Dorothy. We appreciate all the work that you do. We really do. Thank you so much. All right. Are there any other announcements? Did I miss anything? What, did I miss anything? No? All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer together, shall we? God, we thank you for the day you have given us. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for allowing us to be here today and, and worshiping you and, and just celebrating the resurrection together, knowing that you're alive, knowing that you're real. You're not made up, not some fairy tale, but you are recorded in all of history as a son of God. Lord God, as we come today, bless us with your presence through our singing through the playing of the instruments, through the reading of your word, dear Father, bless our fellowship today. Bless this worship. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to sing another song. Anne's going to come up. I know that my Redeemer liveth. All right. And I think everyone here in Blackwell and also mm. on our online watching, we indeed know that our Redeemer liveth. Stand as you are able. I know that my Redeemer liveth.
I know the life he giveth. He gives us so much, doesn't he? And now is our opportunity to give back to him through the worshiping of our Lord and our God, through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. May you give, give generously to the work that continues here at Blackwell and all of Christianity. Please give. You may be seated. Let's praise our Lord and our God by singing our doxology. Let's stand together and sing. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Thank you for life, abundant life and eternal life that you give us so freely. Lord, as we have given the offerings and tithes today, we ask that you bless them. We ask you to continue to bless the givers as well. May you use these offerings to proclaim Jesus is alive to help us continue ministries here at Blackwell for the furtherance of your kingdom. Thank you for your love, O oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, Robin. We appreciate that. Thank you, Miss Parr. That was that was some piano work going on there. <laughs> Very nice. You got another one you want to sing today? <laughs> oh, that was Jerusalem. Hosanna to God in the highest. Absolutely. That's what brings us here today is our Lord, our God, our resurrected Lord, the one who is alive and well for all things. Fear is a powerful emotion. Did you know that? Fear is a powerful motivator as well. Have you ever been afraid of anything? What are you afraid of today? There are many things to be afraid of, aren't there? Think about it. I know all of us have been, uh, and some of us still are afraid of this COVID stuff, and would do anything from getting it. One shot, two shot, three shot, four. One mask, two mask, three mask, four. We'll do anything. Yeah, we will. To prevent us getting sick. You know, we have a many fears, especially over these last two years. Fear of running out of toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. Fear of running out of food. Fear of the things that we need will not be on the shelf. Fear of running out of money if the things that are there because things have gotten so expensive. Fear of dying. Yeah, fear of getting sick. Have you ever noticed there are always stories in the news to keep us afraid of something? Back in the 70s or 80s, I think it was, the, the earth was going to freeze. Remember that? We were going to freeze to death. Now it's global warming and we're going to burn to death. Sea levels are rising. Icebergs are melting. I don't know if you've ever noticed or not or ever studied climate before, but I remember several ice ages and climate and global warming. It seems to happen over millennials. Nevertheless, there's always fear about something. What are you afraid of today? You know, some fear is good and some fear is not so good. Fear is a survival response. When it comes to life and death matters, that is, we are wired so that we will be able to take action to live. Do you think those people in Ukraine right now are fearful? I think they are. Do you think they're doing whatever they need to do in order to survive? I think they are. I think that they are doing that. I've been afraid. I think I shared this story with you once before. The most I've ever been afraid was when I was surfing as a young man in my surfing weight. You know, I was just south of Oregon Inlet, and I was out there by myself surfing. And next thing I know, I see a fin popped up about 20 yards from me. That scared the daylights out of me. And it was coming for me. And I mean, that was a big shark. That dorsal fin, <laughs> that dorsal fin was sticking out of the water like that. So I knew it wasn't a dolphin. And it was coming right to me. I'm shaking. I'm shaking on my surfboard. But that wasn't the scary part. The scary part when it was heading for me and that dorsal fin went under the water, and I could not tell where that shark went. That was pretty scary. That was pretty scary. You know, when you were a child and you were afraid, what did you do? What do you remember doing when you were afraid? I remember when I was a child and I was afraid, I used to jump in the bed and pull the covers over my head. Yeah, did y'all ever do that? Some kids crawl underneath the bed. Some kids close themselves up in the closet and pretend like nobody knows where they are. Well, in today's scripture lesson, the disciples are afraid of dying. They're doing what they can to survive as they are hiding behind closed doors. I told Charlie in the men's class about what I was preaching on today. And Mr. Charlie says, I remember an old song back in the 70s by Charlie Rich. When we get behind closed doors. Now, that's not where I'm going today, okay? I'm not going there today. I'm not going there today. We're going to talk about the disciples hiding behind closed doors. 
We're going to be in John today, uh, the 20th chapter, starting with the 19th verse. So if you want to read along with us at home, uh, the scripture's on, on the screen. And we'll begin reading 20th chapter, the 19th verse. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leadership, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be to you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord, and again the Lord said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, their sins are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Now that's a piece of scripture. That's a whole lot of sermons in that piece of Scripture alone. I have identified at least 10 different sermon topics in these few verses that we have read this morning. Fear, which is going to be part of it. Fear not. Peace. Forgiveness. Being commissioned by God to go and tell. Belief. Unbelief. Failure. Receiving the Holy Spirit, being in the presence of the resurrected Lord, scars and all. The mystery of how Jesus just was able to enter the room with all the doors locked. That's amazing. That's a lot of subject matter there. But we're going to be talking about fear and we're going to be talking about Thomas. Now, if the disciples fully understood the message of Jesus... And the empty tomb and what that meant, if they understood that, they would not be hiding in the upper room, or, or not the upper room, but in this house, and they'd be dancing in the street in celebration that the Lord had been risen from the grave. But they did not fully understand the teachings of Jesus, and so they locked themselves up behind closed doors so that no one could find them. They were hiding. Nobody could peer in the windows. No one could open the door. They were hiding. They were afraid. Instead of, instead of celebrating the risen Lord, they were scared. And on the very evening of the resurrection morning, Jesus wasn't going to let them stay hidden, locked up in a house. And so he found them because there was more work to be done. He's not going to let them stay behind locked doors, hiding like a bunch of scared children, because he had something else for them to do. Now, we know the story. We've heard the story ever since we were little children. We know the story. Jesus was supposed to be dead and gone. Disciples are afraid for their own lives. 
And the fear was not unreasonable. If you remember last week, we talked about the ones that went to the tomb, and they hightailed it out of there because they were afraid the Romans were going to get them. They were afraid that the Roman, uh, they were afraid of the, the Jewish authority was going to get them and have the same fate as Jesus Christ. And things looked dark, didn't they? They did. The one that they put all the trust in is now dead and gone. The one that they in, in, in involved their whole life, their whole being in is now dead and gone. What's going to happen now? They might come and get us. It might be difficult for us to imagine ourselves in the place of the disciples. But how many of you have risked your life for something? For a purpose? Any of us here? How many have risked our lives for something that we believe in or follow after? Have we ever been seriously threatened? Probably not. In the midst of their fears, Jesus came and stood beside them. Have you ever been afraid or felt the load of the world crashing in upon you and you felt like you were all alone and then there was a sense there was a sense of the presence of God maybe you were praying or maybe you were thinking of a hymn or a song or maybe just contemplating life and you felt a presence there's a presence of almighty God not the power of the Holy Spirit but how astonishing it must have been. Jesus, the one whom they thought was dead, the only Messiah, of their friend, is now with them. And you know what? I bet they were afraid for a couple of reasons. I bet they were afraid the Romans were going to come after them, the Hebrews were going to come after them, and now Jesus is in their midst I bet they were a little bit afraid that Jesus was just going to lay them out. You low down, dirty, rotten scoundrels. What are you doing locked up in this room? Why aren't you out there? And, uh, why are you doing in here so afraid? Why didn't you stand with me at the cross? Why did you run away from the tomb? You would have seen me there just like Mary did. But no, he doesn't, he doesn't do any of that. But what does he say? The first words out of his mouth, he says, peace be with you. And he repeated it again. Peace be with you. Mm. That must have been something. He was alive. And he is alive today. Their belief was not misplaced. Their trust in Jesus was not wrong. The hope that was found in him is still alive and well. And Jesus still had work for them to do. They must have been wondering exactly what Jesus meant after he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. Y'all remember that verse, don't you? Even as vacation Bible school. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. I think there's a song like that, isn't it, man? So send I you. I think there is a song like that. Jesus responds to the innermost feelings. Probably a sense of failure, certainly the sense of fear. And what now? As the Father has sent me, so send I you. To put it plainly, he tells his disciples that they cannot stay behind these locked doors in comfort or fearful or whatever the case might be. The story is not over. The story has just begun. And Jesus says, I need you to get the story out. Get out of here. Get to work. Everybody needs to hear the news of the resurrection and the salvation that I have to bring. I wonder if this request made them more afraid. Go share your faith. How many of Christians today are afraid to share the faith? Oh, they'll think I'm a fanatic. Yeah, there's some of that going. I, I don't want to be looked down upon by my neighbors. We're a bit afraid how to share our faith. And then there's old Thomas. He gets a bad deal, I think. You know, all of them felt 
victim of unbelief. Every one of them. Thomas just wasn't there the first visit. Poor old Thomas, one of the twelve, he wasn't there when Jesus first came. And Thomas could not believe that Jesus was still alive. He could not believe the ones that were telling this story. It's a pretty big story, isn't it? Pretty big story. Thomas says, unless I see the marks in your hands and put my hand in your side, I, 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 I will not believe. That's what he says, very forceful. About a week later, disciples still gathered, locked up, same house, doors locked, and Jesus appears, and what does he say again? Third time, peace be with you. Thomas, he says, Thomas, come here. You see that? See my hands? See these scars? Come here, Thomas. Put your hand on my side. Oh, wow. Thomas didn't even get up. He said, oh, my Lord, my God. My Lord, my God. What a response. And Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet still believe. You know what? That's us. Blessed are we who have not seen him. And yet, believe, that's us. We have not seen him. Or have we? Or have we? Perhaps in our own personal lives, in our personal walk, we have experienced the Lord. The song that we sang, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and on the earth again shall stand. I know eternal life he giveth. The grace and power in his hands. I know, I know that Jesus liveth. And on the earth again shall stand. I know, I know the life he giveth. That grace and power are in his hands. We, like the first disciples, seek safety when we are afraid. Sometimes fear paralyzes us from doing what God wants us to do. But Jesus comes to us. He says, get out of here. Get to work. I need somebody to tell the story. And so that's where we come into play. Tell the story of Jesus Christ. This morning, we have the opportunity to tell the story, to remember the story by coming to the table. And as we come, may we reflect upon all things that Jesus has given us. Our hymn of response is at Calvary, and as we sing today, let us think about the blessings of Jesus Christ. Are spinning down it.
You may be seated. And at this time, I would like to invite the deacons to come forward as we prepare the meal of our Lord. You know, we are invited to come to the table not because we must, but because we can. Not because we're perfect in any stretch of imagination. Because we're all imperfect. It's through the grace of God that we are made whole. You may be seated. So we have this opportunity to be a part of what Jesus asked us to do. He said, do this right here in remembrance of me. Oh, falling on the hills of Easter, let us remember him. Let us remember what it must have been like in that last supper with his disciples in that upper room. They thought they were up there celebrating the Passover. He told them exactly what to do, how to prepare, and they did. And so as they gathered there, Judas was still up there. Before the dinner, he took his cloth and disrobed and cleaned the feet. Of each one, even Judas the one that was about to betray he washed the feet of all 12 of them. Well, you're talking about humility. You're talking about a servant. I don't know about you, but I don't wash too many feet. But Jesus did that night. He knew what was about to take place. He knew the plan. And yet he followed through with it. In just a matter of hours, he'd be hanging on a cross. And as he met there with his disciples, he said, This is my body, which is for you. And he broke it and he blessed it. He said, Do this. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father God, we just praise your holy name for what you've done for us. We thank you for sending your begotten to save this world as the supreme sacrifice to pay the debt that he did not owe and that we could not pay. God, as we come to the table today, we ask your blessings on this bread. We ask the blessings in our remembrance. We ask your blessings in us partaking of the supper today. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus said, this is my body, which will be sacrificed for you so that you might have life, a full life, abundant life. And thanks be to God, eternal life. to tell us that after he passed the bread, he blessed the cup and gave it to his disciples. He said, within this cup, there is a new covenant, a new type of relationship between me and you and God. Not based on works, not based on actions, but based on grace, on love, on mercy, on forgiveness. This is the new covenant that we find in this cup. Cup represents the blood of Christ, which was shed on Calvary's tree. Let us pray. The love that you showed us, O oh God, on that cross of Calvary, we thank you today. For without that sacrifice, our lives would be hopeless. But because of the sacrifice, we have hope. And we know that hope is not wishful thinking, but it is believing in something real and tangible. Something that one day we will see. God, as we take this cup today, we ask that you bless this cup. Help us to remember as we drink this cup of everything that you have done for us. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
In the cup is a new covenant. As we drink the cup, may we not only drink the cup because Jesus died on that cross and because he was buried in that tomb, but we drink the cup because he was resurrected from the dead. He is alive and he is well. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And one day, he will come back to collect us, all who believe. Let us drink this cup in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Following that supper, Jesus knew what laid before him. The disciples did not. And so they left that meal singing a song. And so is the tradition here at Blackwell Memorial. Let us stand together and sing, Blessed be the tie that binds. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Let us And amen. May each of you have a blessed week.